Golden Meatball Awards Banquet. Year's biggest wingding for Swedish chefs. Oh, joy. I just know I'll go home with tonight's Swedish Chef of the Year Award. Uh, hey, Woodpecker, how'd you like a free meal and a chance to make some easy money? Free food and easy money? You've come to the right bird. I need another seat filler for the award show. Now, when a guest leaves his table, it's your job to sit in his seat. That way, the place always looks full. Eat all you want. Just stay in your seat until the ticket holder gets back and you see his ticket. We get lots of mooches around here. Wow! My three favorite things, being the center of attention, all the food I can eat, and sitting on my butt all night. We'll return with our first Golden Meatball Awards after these words from our sponsor. Ooh, dumplings. Wait, wait, wait. I must see if they are as tasty as mine. An empty seat. Go, 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 go. So, when do we eat? Oh, a seat filler. How tree goes. to our awards. Oh, boy. Appetizers. Shh. This little dumpling was stuffed with roast beef. you seem to find it, this seat belongs to Woody Woodpecker, first-class seat filler. But I'm Wally Walrus, the great Swedish chef, and I... Shh! Uh, yeah, sorry. Minor misunderstanding. And the award for the best meatball in a side dish goes to Gunter Gustafsson. Bravo! Let me go! That's my seat! By Yemeni, that's my seat! I demand you excise that woodpecker from my seat this instant, before I win Swedish Chef of the Year! Sure, just show me your ticket! I lost it! Wait! You can't do this to me! I pioneered the slow porch meatball! Oh! That woodpecker's goose is cooked now, for sure, you bet. And now, let's bring on our next presenter, the world-famous... Woody Woodpecker. Hey, that's me. And testing, this thing isn't on. Oh, hey, this is such an honor. Oh, you're too kind. Hey, how you doing? Oh, please. Okay. More. <laughs> Oh, the 
like The award for Swedish Chef of the Year goes to... Hey, yeah. Isn't it an honor just to be nominated? Huh? Am I right? Huh? Am I? Yeah. All right, then. Let's see. The winner is... Mr. Wally Walrus. Huh? Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> I would yes like to say... Get out of my seat! <laughs> my chair! I can't leave my chair! Auf Wiedersehen, my tushy little cushion! <laughs> <laughs> I got my award and my chair. I'm so happy, yeah. <laughs> wow, what a show! Action, drama, shtick! Listen, listen, listen to that applause! You gave the Golden Meatballs just what it needed. How'd you like to host next year's banquet? All the food you can eat! Woohoo! You've got yourself a deal! Mm. I knew him when he was just a seat filler, you know. Woody, Woody, Woody! <laughs> What's your name again? I can't seem to find you in Who's Who. You're definitely not of the Great Northern Flicker Woodpeckers. Are you sure you're not of the Hampton Woodpeckers? One of the oldest families in the city? They eat here all the time. I don't know. I'm just a common woodpecker. Look, I brought my money. Can't I just eat something? I'm starving. Let's see. Common woodpecker. It's got to be in here somewhere. Common woodpecker. Common woodpecker. Common... Common woodpecker? Shave only doesn't serve anything or anyone common. <laughs> Imagine that, a common woodpecker trying to eat a chave Ali. Hmm. My money! <laughs> so I'm not rich enough, huh? Wow, did you see that? <laughs> I say, is that who I think it is? Oh, yes, it's Lord Crinkle. You mean the Lord Crinkle? Yeah, it's Lord Crinkle, the famous polo player. The famous rich polo player. Rich, get him! Yumpin, yiminy. It's Lord Crinkle, the famous rich polo player. Ho, ho, ho. Lord Crinkle here. That's Lord Crinkle of the Oxford Crinkles. Uh, do be good and give us a menu. There's a good chap. My, you're thin for a meat to be. Uh, Lord Crinkle, I'm over here. Huh? Did somebody say something? <laughs> uh, who said that? I did, Lord Crinkle. Huh? Over here, Lord Crinkle. Huh? Where? Where? Who is this? Now, now stay still, whoever you are. <laughs> Lord Crinkle, can I show you to a table? Uh, a table? What are you doing down there? How do you expect to run a restaurant from the floor? Please, Lord Crinkle, let me show you to a table. A table? Oh, no, 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 dear boy, I couldn't do that. I'm here to scout out the restaurant for the Duke. The Duke? Yes, the Duke. He'll be here in a minute. Good evening, uh, Mr. Duke. Is this restaurant clean? Uh, yeah, yeah, it's clean. We'll see about that. Fork? <laughs> Look at this filth. Now clean that fork. Oh. 
I think it's clean now, Duke. <laughs> Still dirty. I've got it this time. Like this? Nope. Ladies and gentlemen, may I present Her Royal Majesty, the Queen. The Queen. The Queen. the queen. Oh, royalty. Big money. Ooh, the queen. <laughs> Welcome to Shave Oli, your majesty. Ooh, you may kiss my hand. The royal foot. Um, have you food? <sighs> have you any more food? <laughs> Mr. Walrus. Appetizer? That was an appetizer? Uh, yes. I'll be ready for my dinner after I pay you the proper respects. Mr. Walrus, you may kneel. Kneel? You mean... <clears throat> knighthood? Your Majesty. I dub thee Sir Sweat of Walrus. I'm ready for my second course now. Uh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Why, you woodpecker! <laughs> <laughs> I dub you Sir Freeloader. <laughs> I dub you Sir Moose. <laughs> I dub you Sir Looper. I dub you Sir Slacker! You looking for a lid, kid? Uh, oh, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. I'm on a top half. Yeah, sure. Here you are, Sonny. Hey, you call that a top hat? <laughs> um, 
silly boy. Well, what do you know? Uh, let's try it for size. The size is okay, but it don't fit. Hmm. We make them fit. is Dirk Danger's Spy Wars Part 42 opens in 300 days. 
I'm Ken Tinselton, reporting to you live from the theater that will premiere this blockbuster in 10 months. Right where I'm standing will undoubtedly be a massive line of Spy Wars fans. <laughs> What are you doing? I'm now officially the first in line. <laughs> Folks, this is one true blue movie fan, to be sure. <laughs> this is gonna be fantastical. I'm gonna be the first customary in line. <laughs> this can't be. I'm the number one fan of this particular movie franchise. for 282 days, 13 hours, and 28 minutes, pal. This spot's mine. We'll flip for it. Tails, I win. I can make a big sale for you, bub. Be right back. Red Hots, get your free hot dogs here. All you can eat. How's about a dog? Just step out of line and up to beefy goodness. I'm a vegetarian. That'll be eight bucks. Hmm. Add this to the bill. <laughs> Dirk Danger, my hero. I'm 
gonna teach you to play on my symphonies, woodpecker. <laughs> One, please. Oh, why, thank you. Enjoy the show. No cuts. <sighs> 300 days, 8 hours, and 37 minutes in line. Wasted. One ticket, please. Congratulations! You are the one millionth movie fan here to see Mr. Alias versus Dirt Danger. Yeah, so I was first. But now you've won this amazing spy kit. Plus, you get your choice of any seat in the house and movie tickets for life! Oh, boy! Uh, excuse me, but I want you to have this for all we've meant to each other. No hard feelings. Yeah, sure. Loser. <laughs> Out you go, silly little woodpecker. Enough with the funny. I need to have my sleep. Poor little woodpecker. He has fallen from his nest. Nighty night, woodpecker. <laughs> Looks like we're both up, huh? Oh well, I might as well have a late night snack. Oh, let's see. There's cheese, and ham, and pickles, and tomatoes, and a little bit of onion. Oh, joy. I just can't wait to sink my tusks into this sandby... <gasps> Who? What? Where's the... But... Hmm. I don't even remember eating all that stuff. Ooh. I better get some sleep. My mind is going all kerplunky. <laughs> Atta boy, come and get it. Who is yingling my bell? Night, mailman. 
I don't know of any night mail. Special delivery. Jumpin' Jupiter, just what I need. Like a boat more than a fjord. No more sleepless nights for me, Woodpecker. Virdo digging up my lawn. No, I don't know who it is. Just come and get them out of here. Hmm. Hmm. What is going on here? Aha! Food baker. So you're the weirdo trench digger. All right, buddy, let's go downtown. Ooh, that sounds lovely. Uh, at least it's nice and quiet here. I can be getting the rest I need. By me. <laughs> Thank you. 
bouncing baby boy. to play horsey. Watches me? Why, cooking with Rufus Ledufus has always been a, how you say, hit show for this station. Listen to this letter from Mr. Sheely Wheely. Dear Rufus, which is moi, please send me all your recipes, ingredients included. Ha! 
You can't buy a better review for a cooking show. You, g g what? What's a scoop, boss? What's a scoop? Wilbur, we have to liven up the show or the bus is going to fire me, you know. Well, like I've been saying, you gotta make more exotic like dishes, Rufus. Crap, Suzette! An idea has hit my fantastic brain! I got to make more exotic like dishes! <laughs> Get me this penguin! We're going to make gumbo! <laughs> Cooking with Rufus Redufus! I am your humble cooking servant, and today we're going to cook up the most exotic thing that you ever did see! Well, you're not my idea of exotic, but I guess you'll have to do. There you go. We're live at five. Hello there. Uh, welcome to my number one fan, which is you. I got your letter, and uh, welcome to the show, you see. You probably want a nice warm bath after your travels, yes? <laughs> there you go. Now, everybody will be watching the show, no? Come on back here, you little critter! Yeah, oof! Ow, 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 ow. I am, uh, how you say, cooked in my own jeux. Get back, you little annoying one! I got a show to do! Uh. Boss, this ain't no jacuzzi show. We're on in five seconds. Then you better find the penguins in, no? No? Yes! Huh? Just get the penguins! <laughs> uh, the water is uh, not quite ready, you see. Uh, so, instead, we're going to prepare a penguin uh, gumbo pie. Yeah, the uh, penguin uh, gumbo pie there uh, requires a delicate balance of spices and lava. Yeah. So, uh, walk with me to the spice wreck, and we'll pick up some loving spices. What do you think? Uh, let me see now here. Uh, we're going to make these ingredients sing like crickets on a muggy Sunday. <laughs> Whatever that is. <laughs> Google it, gumbo! <laughs> the penguin gumbo pie just makes me so, uh, how you say, exciting. <laughs> uh, why don't we take a little break to calm things down, and then we shall pie that penguin up real good, you know. You turned out the lights. Boss, boss, do you have the penguin? Well, I couldn't find a penguin, but I found an even better kind of exotic animal to live in a show up. What do you think? Hiya, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, like I was saying, uh, you cannot serve such exotic delicacies as a penguin gumbo pie and penguin gumbo gumbo without the proper uh, table dressing. Uh, while my assistant puts the uh, finishing touches on the pie, I'll show you how to make the party proper with all the delicious trimmings. <laughs> Well, I tell you, nothing says the good life like doilies and the lazy Suzette, no? <laughs> That's why Rufus always recommends... Oh, great googly gumbo! Uh, that is to say, uh, sometimes you just got to throw caution to the wind and... Uh, and you... Oh. And, uh, yes, uh, we'll take a quick break here to clean up. And then it's penguin gumbo pie for all and... Good night. I'll be right back. <laughs> I have you now. <laughs> Boss, I think I found an even exotic animal than the last one. Could it perchance be the penguin? <laughs> oh. I hate seafood. Wow, is that no good? 
Boss, no, please! The show's back on in five seconds! Ah, don't care about the show, Wilbur! Now it is a show down! Cooking with Rufus Ladoofus, this is Wilbur. Oh, hello, sir. I, I can explain. You see, what? The switchboard is lit up like a Christmas tree for this? They love the penguin? Wilbur, you go get my recipe book, and we shall find a new way to cook penguin, no? Oh. Wilbur, what are you doing? Release me this instant! It's your show now, sir, which means I can't let anything bad happen to you. So, what's today's episode about, boss? Uh, welcome to Cooking with Chili. Today, we will be making crawdad gumbo. Yum. Oh, no, you don't. I am not an ingredient. I am a great chef. I shall return and saute you. You shall see. The Bread Risers, a show so big it starts on Channel 1 and ends on Channel 22. Right after a word from our sponsor. Are you cold? Hungry? Do you long to be someplace warm and tropical? Then you need a Mexican cruise! <gasps> Tickets start at only $4,000. Welcome, passenger. Can I have your ticket stub? Then get! I have never had a stowaway sneak past me. And I ain't about to start now. Nachos, check. Saudi pop, check. Sardines. Check, mate. Game over. Captain, I am inspecting in eagle-eye fashion any luggage that looks suspicious-like. Don't have to open. Don't have to open. Don't have to open. And some you just don't want to open. <laughs> Some itches they just don't have a cream for. I am being demoted to deckhand? But, Captain, sir. <laughs> Listen here, you may have fooled the captain, you little ice monkey, but I am the sharpest hook in this here tackle box and... <laughs> ah! That critter has got to go. 
Got you. Demoted to pool boy. But Captain, sir. <laughs> Pass with caution. This vehicle makes wide turns. I'm gonna get that little penguin off this here cruise if it's the most lasting thing I ever... Huh? Freeloading feed bag. <laughs> Be motion to waiter. Now hold on one ice picking minute. The captain's the only one that can do that around here. Bus boy. I've never let a stowaway get away this away. I'll bag the little critter and give him a fireworks spectacular he'll never forget to remember. I'm being demoted to anchor. Chum, uh, you'd like to have some of them apples, wouldn't you? Well, why don't you hop over the fence and grab some? Andy, he's not his evil word. You know it's wrong to steal. Heavens to Betsy, pal. They'll never miss an old apple or two. Come on, while nobody's looking. Look. It's a cinch. Come on. Well, why not? You see, Andy? Misfortune has already overtaken you. Ah, button your lip. Come on, kid. Don't let that bother you. You're loin. Hey, take a candle of them beauties up there. Andy, this foolhardy venture 
can only lead to your downfall. Again, I beg of you, turn back before it's too late. Yeah. <laughs> hey, these apples are green. Let me see. Climbed an apple tree. He stole an apple, then two, then three. And when he started to climb back down, he slipped and he landed on the ground. Up jumped the devil. Up jumped the devil. And every time he turned around, up jumped the devil in the white nightgown. Listen, Daniel, don't you worry at all. Sooner or later, we all have a fall, so don't give up. You're far from sunk. Come on, let me boost you up that old tree trunk. The devil's words were so much tripe. The boy ate the apples, but they weren't ripe. And after that, he lay awake all night long with a tummy ache. Cause up jumped the devil. Up jumped the devil. Now if temptation comes around, don't listen to the devil in the white nightgown. Temptation comes around. Don't listen to the devil. He ain't on the level. Don't listen to the devil in the white night gown. That car chase had more twists than a mutated pretzel. <sighs> Now you're taking a fall, little lady. The clues tell me the real killer is someone with huge ears. A long nose. And he's prone to drooling. Aha! Uh -huh. The perp 
was under my nose the whole time. You're taking the fall. A bell went off, and I knew there was no way this pooch was the pilferer. Because for a canine, he's actually about a K2. I opened the door to a guy who looked like he'd just been hit by a truck full of handsome. Pardon me, ma'am. Do you want a vacuum cleaner? He was no slouch in the sweet talk department, either. A vacuum? Uh, sure, I have one, but it's in the shop. Sorry to bother you, then. Say, are you part of the neighborhood patrol program? Uh, yeah. Some nut job's been stealing vacuum cleaners in the area. Oh. <coughs> I could help get the word out. Uh, leave it to the professionals, ma'am. I was in the mood to return videos without rewinding them. Drink milk right out of the carton a day after the expiration date. Oh. It took some convincing. But Chandler saw the light. Winnie P.I. was on the job. First thing I did was plaster the town with flyers. <laughs> Deputy Dizzy, go to the other side of town. I'll whistle if I need backup. <laughs> now, to find out how this vacuum cleaner crook's mind worked. This crazy woodpecker was nosing into my business. She made me want to scream louder than a yodeler in tight underwear. I told Chandler the best P.I.s always nose around the scene of the crime. We're here to ask you about your stolen vacuum cleaner, ma'am. Where were you on the night of... <clears throat> I'll have this, Red. Get a clue. Ten four, Chandler. I'm on it like gum on a sidewalk. Don't mind the mess. I'm dusting for clues. <laughs> I figured I'd dust for prints. It's a dirty job, mostly because of the dirt. Give me that. Go secure the crime scene. My partner was feeling the pressure. We needed a break worse than an out-of-work orthopedic surgeon. Suddenly, I had what might be a clue. Unfortunately, it turned out to be a footprint. By the looks of things, the crook was either an enormous centipede with hundreds of feet, or a man who walked with two shoes on. I decided to trace his every move. What we had here was a sweet tooth vacuum cleaner thief with size eight W's. Let's have a look at the closet where you kept the missing vacuum. Street. Give me that. So, with my partner out on the mend, I was left alone for a stakeout. I found the perfect bait. The TurboVac 200 on a lure out thief.
pants like yours. He was wearing a ski mask like the one sticking out of your pocket. And he, he lives at 10 Amp Street like you. <gasps> Chandler! You are the thief! I wasn't at your house for any neighborhood patrol. I was casing your joint red to steal your vacuum. But the neighborhood patrol posters. I was taking them down. But you got some cockamamie idea I was the law. <gasps> Who are you? I own a cleaning service. Business was so bad, I figured... You steal all the vacuums in town, business will skyrocket. But then you have to stick your nosy beak into things. I want you to know, mister, whatever you're thinking, you can just forget. Because you're taking the fall. Oh. Chandler character was slicker than the shine on a freshly licked lollipop. But we stuck to the case like glue and got our man. The streets were safe once more for vacuum cleaners everywhere. Winnie P.I. and Deputy Dizzy were on the job. 